This is Tom Bernanke. And George Kittle, the football player, just injured his cuboid bone right here, and he's out for eight weeks. I'm gonna show you the absolute best treatments, home stretching, home icing, home products, best shoes, best research-based evidence for your cuboid injuries and how to self-treat it now. Guys, we need your help. Subscribe, give us a like. It really helps in the algorithm and makes these videos help more people. This is your cuboid bone right here. It can be injured in up to 40% of ankle sprains and a lot of studies show up to 5% of all people have cuboid pain and 5% of all people. So that's one in 20 people in the world have this. You can see the cuboid is getting agitated right there. So on the outside of your foot, when you land and your foot flattens out, your cuboid is jostling around in there and a lot of weird stuff's happening to your cuboid. It can get stuck and readjusted in the wrong position and this could lead to jamming and outside of the arch pain. So the way cuboid syndrome feels is along the outside of the foot right here, you're sore, you're achy, it could be redness, you don't have quite the flexibility in your ankle, you feel stiffer, you're walking with your leg turned out to the side to take pressure off the cuboid on the outside. Those are the symptoms. This right here is your cuboid bone right there so you can see a couple things could happen with this watch this oh it's not dislocated but that's subluxed now it's back in a place or this could happen not completely dislocated well that's kind of dislocated but see now it's back in a place but watch this kind of dislocated kind of dislocated so what happens is if the ligaments surrounding this and at the bottom right here become loose or torn this could start to shift and kind of pop out of place so when you're walking it's not rubbing normally so as you're walking if this bone right here is popping out of place see that could mess you up quite a bit so what happens is something like that is called cuboid subluxions right there so if you're walking and it's at a place that can tend to happen when your foot flattens see how the cuboid is at a place right there uh when a lot of things happen when you get sore when the ligaments get agitated but that's cuboid subluxion who diagnoses your cuboid injury i'm biased as a podiatrist so go see a podiatrist we can get x-rays we can get ultrasounds in the office then if that's still not enough mri ct scans that's how you diagnose it a podiatrist can help manipulate your foot and show you how to do all these things so you're not missing it because a lot of the times it might not be a cuboid sprain it might be a break it might be a stress fracture it might be more get checked out if you're worried this is a nice bottle. Rolling this along the bottom of your foot will decrease the inflammation. It both massages your plantar fascia and the ligaments and muscles around your cuboid bone. So this is a great first start. Take a cheap water bottle, freeze it in your freezer, and we're talking like five, 10 minutes, never more than 20 minutes. You're gonna start freezing your skin. So that's two things you wanna do right there. You're both massaging and icing. Heat. So this is a heat pack right here. I don't recommend it. Get rid of that heat. Uh, massage and ice at the same time. This is the first part of any great cuboid treatment. Just ice it and massage it. Another great thing is I have some links down in the show notes for a cryosphere. I like this for bigger muscles, like your chest muscles, your biceps, and your upper body. Uh, you know, this is made popular even for the calf. I could l use it for the calf, the thighs, the hamstring. So you could see me using it here. Just be careful not to pinch the skin. See, I got some leg hairs right there. Be gentle in the comments. But for the foot, look at that. It doesn't really stick to the ground. Uh, you can't really use it on your calf. You have to be holding it with two hands and rolling it. So that's good for the big muscles. But for the foot, that's why we recommend frozen massage tools, even a bottle. Get a massage roller stick instead of this if you're going to buy a tool. This is like seven or eight bucks online. And you want to use it. See your calf muscles and your perineal muscles. They actually come down to your foot around the cuboid. So see right here, your plantar fascia and your calf 
and your thigh muscle, this actually does loosen up all the joints for your foot. So those muscles actually come down to the foot from your leg and the stretching is the most important part. So watch this next part, instead of just icing it, focus on the stretching and loosening up the cuboid. The real key as well is don't have a flexible shoe. Have a great supportive shoe with a great insert in there. These make all the difference. Our favorites are down in the show notes. They can be low cost. They can be very effective. Check our favorites. We got them all linked out for you. I won't spend much more time on it here. So right now, see how my feet are equal? If this one can bend here and this one can't, that might mean it's your cuboid. Whereas right here, the cuboid might be on this one. So right now, see how my feet are equal? If this one can bend here and this one can't, that might mean it's your cuboid. Whereas right here, the cuboid might be on this one. The idea of stretching and massaging your legs is very counterintuitive, but the muscles and ligaments from your calf come around your foot, especially your perineal tendons. So after icing, massage with a massage stick your calf muscles, especially if you're a runner. This will let your feet and ankles bend a lot more naturally, especially your plantar fascia. They're not contracted. You can even use one of those rubber balls to just massage all the ligaments and muscles around your foot. This is very important before you even stretch the cuboid that we're gonna show you at the end. So loosening up your ankles after you massage them, even before you stretch. And again, we're gonna show you cuboid specific exercises, but this is to warm up your feet, especially if you're an athlete and you're having problems. First you massage. See, before the massage, I could never have touched my toes, but now I can actually stretch with a towel. I'm stretching my hamstring, my calf muscle. I'm already getting like five to 10 degrees more through the ankle and even more through the hamstring. This really makes a huge difference for an athlete. You should always be warming up and then stretching. And look at my plantar fascia is less sore. I've got more flexibility there. That puts less pressure on your cuboid when you're running and moving, less likely to dislocate. So then this part, put the towel underneath your toes so you're getting that extra ankle flexibility so it pinches your cuboid a lot less. Now the cuboid specific exercises. This is your cuboid right here. Right about there is your cuboid right through there. So what happens is you can see that there is a muscle there. So when you're pressing, you're really bruising up that muscle. So as we take off that muscle underneath as well, you could see that the cuboid is under here and you have this tendon called your perineus longus and the tendon actually runs over the cuboid. So see how the tendon's going through there? So you can see across the bottom, see how you have this groove right here? That's a groove for the tendon. See how my pen goes in there perfectly? So you can see as I clear away all these muscles, that tendon's going through there. So when you're pushing it, you're actually pressing on the tendon underneath and the muscle up top. So don't get too aggressive. You're not gonna, you don't need to bruise anything up. Just loosen it up, stretch, and you can also twist the fifth metatarsal. So what you're looking at is twisting this guy and twisting this guy. So see, I could basically, if it's out of place, I could basically take my thumb and always put it back into the right place. So there's two maneuvers. There's called the cuboid whip, and then there's a cuboid squeeze. But basically, what the idea is, is with, between both of them, is the cuboid's out of place and you wanna get it back in a place. To me, the techniques don't really matter that much. What happens basically is, you wanna take the cuboid and you kinda wanna just wiggle it back in a place. These are just forceful maneuvers. So the maneuvers basically include pushing it up, so it's like a forceful push up, or a forceful, if it's above, it's a forceful push down. So if it's below, you wanna push it up. If it's above, you wanna push it down. So a couple good ways to do this is, I saw a couple great descriptions. You basically just wanna take the foot and you wanna wiggle it. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It kinda loosens it up 
it gently starts to pop back into place. Same thing, you can do the fifth metatarsal, you can do these ones, and you wiggle it. So the process calls for 10 wiggles of this, 10 wiggles of this. So if you're gonna do it yourself, so see right here, I conveniently marked out your cuboid. So see, the cuboid's tough to feel, but you can see your fifth metatarsal right here this bone right here, I can feel the end right there. So you can feel that right there. So you know that's your fifth metatarsal, so you can draw that. Since you know this is here, you can feel your heel bone, and you can feel your heel bones kind of coming up to about there, and the heel bone's kind of ending right about there. So here's your cuboid. So basically the idea is you want to take your cuboid and you want to basically f twist it. So you can go right here, 10 twists. Mine's in good position already. Or you could take this bone and do 10 twists. So you can kind of gently start to pop it in. I feel the difference between the two bones right there. So nothing's hurting right here, but I'm pressing under there. There's also another technique where they say, so here's your cuboid right here. You wanna press with your thumb and you wanna press it. So if it's below, you wanna press with your thumb. This is called the cuboid's, cuboid whip. So basically the whole point is you, you jack the foot down while you push up with your thumb. So jack the foot down while you push up with your thumb. The squeeze maneuver is if you're holding the cuboid from underneath, you wanna push the toes down like this. So see, like this, you can pop it in or down. So the names aren't really that important to me, but the idea is you're kinda of just wiggling it back into place. So for myself, I'm just grabbing it with my thumb and I'm using it. If you have somebody helping them, basically massaging and from underneath too. See, there's the cuboid underneath. So underneath, if you get your thumb there, I have a hard time doing it on myself, but basically that's your cuboid. I can feel it moving right there. See how I have my fingers there? You can pop it back in. So that's your cuboid massage right there. So bend 10 times, bend 10 times, bend 10 times, bend 10 times. Guys, thank you so much for subscribing and for giving us a like. It really helps us in the algorithm. So we appreciate you. Tell us what helped and what didn't help.